start. Let me just do this. Okay. Give it a bang out. Met. Met. Uh, mm -hmm. <coughs> All um, right. Okay, friends, good morning. Let us begin our uh, metta recital. You can see it on the screen if you have it. Okay, let us begin our metta meditation. May all beings be happy and secure. May, may all, all beings, beings have happy minds. minds. Whatever, Whatever living beings, beings there may, may be, without exception, weak or strong, long, large, medium, short, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, born or coming to birth, May all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another, nor despise anyone anywhere. Neither from anger nor ill will should anyone wish harm to another. As a mother would risk her own life to protect her only child, even so towards all living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart. One should cultivate for all the world a heart of boundless loving friendliness above, below, and all around, unobstructed, without hatred, resentment, whether standing, walking, sitting, lying down, or whenever awake, one should develop this mindfulness. This is called divinely dwelling here, not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed with vision, removing desires for sensual pleasures. One comes never again to birth in the womb. This is a very earnest wish for all living beings. We honestly, sincerely keep this in mind and continue our meditation. This time, as we mention every day, we repeat the same thing every day because that is what we practice every day. Take Bread, pay attention to the breath, undivided attention without using words. And when you breathe in, notice the breath touching the rims of your nostrils. And then notice the chest area expanding and lower abdominal area expanding. As you breathe out, notice the contraction of lower abdomen and contraction of chest area, and then the breath leaving the nostrils. As you breathe out and breathe in, you notice a brief pause between inhaling and exhaling. You can feel that you can feel inhaling breath, exhaling breath, the breath touching the rims of your nostrils. You feel the expansion and contraction of your lungs and lower abdomen. All this you know only through feeling. And then you perceive what you feel. The, and then <clears throat> you notice that feeling is changing as you breathe in and you, as you breathe out. Then you perceive this, your perception changes as you breathe in and out. Attention changes, 
consciousness changes and all of them change as you breathe in and breathe out. What you notice when you breathe in is no longer when you breathe out. They change as quickly as they arise. And when you see this, there is nothing to hold on to. The body is relaxed, the breath is relaxed, the mind is relaxed. Then it is easy for you to let go of this feelings, perception as they come and go. Don't hold on to any of them. That is, and also your desire or greed as a hindrance also fades away. And then you notice whatever resentment as hindrance is in the mind also fades away disappears and our metta feeling as we did earlier takes root strongly and then you have compassion for those who are suffering that is your compassion when these three arise as you know in yourself then you will have a confidence, your doubt will fade away, restlessness and worry fade away, sleepiness and drowsiness fade away. This happens very naturally because your intention is very good, wholesome, and you remain alert. And when, they, when all these negative states fade away, the mind gains concentration. When you gain concentration, it may not be very strong, and yet it is sufficient because this practice is very short. But this is how it happens in your longer practice, on the cushion or somewhere, sitting. You experience this in this way and concentration becomes deeper. With this, let us continue our practice. When the concentration is very deep, you notice many, many incalculable amount of things are happening in our mind and body. And they happen so quickly that we have no way to pick one of them. They happen very quickly. They appear and disappear, appear and disappear. As they appear and disappear, so many other things related to them also appear and disappear. For instance, when feeling appears and disappears, pleasantness of the feeling, unpleasantness of the feeling, neutral, the state of the feeling also appear and disappear together with this. Sometimes words, phrases, ideas, memories, and, and other thoughts, other feelings, emotions, countless things happen very quickly and they all fade away. And just be aware of their appearing and disappearing and continue paying attention and stay in the practice.
Suffering be free from suffering. May the fear struck be free from fear. May the grieving be free from grief. So too may all beings be. This is a very earnest, sincere wish with which we started our meditation. We want to repeat this wish even at the end of this session. So now let me start my little talk on uh, mentality and materiality. Yesterday I started the very important section from uh, Maha Nidana Sutta, the discourse on uh, great uh, discourse on causality. There the Buddha said to Venerable Ananda, who said uh, this dependent origination is uh, simple, easy to understand. It appears to be simple, but it, uh, it appears to be deep but it uh, seems to be as clear as clear can be. So after uh, correcting Venerable Ananda, the Buddha continued uh, explaining the dependent origination. But uh, I want to bring up the relevant part of uh, that discourse relevant to mentality and materiality. There he said, uh, if uh, it was said, Buddha himself repeated what he said earlier, and uh, he said, it was said, with mentality, materiality as condition, there is contact. I you remember yesterday I said, uh, in uh, Maha, uh, dependent origination discourse, uh, contact arises from uh, sense, uh, six senses. Uh, it, it, it says, uh, depending on six senses, uh, uh, consciousness uh, or contact arises. Even in uh, Madhu Pindika Sutta, always cont contact uh, is mentioned that contact arises after uh, three things come together. The, the senses, sensory objects, consciousness. When these three come together, contact arises. There is contact. Now here in Mahanidana Sutta, Buddha does not mention uh, six senses. He straight away goes from mentality and materiality, and from mentality and materiality, uh, depending on them, contact arises. So this is what he repeated there. With mentality and materiality as condition, there is contact. How that is so, Ananda, should be understood in this way. If those qualities, traits, signs, and indications through which there is a description of mental body were all absent, would designation contact be discerned in the mental body? What are the uh, qualities, traits, and signs and indications in the mental materiality body, Men, uh, mental, uh, mentality or mentality body. Nama, 
they are the word Rupa. Uh, in the name being category, uh, we have uh, uh, feeling, perception, attention, the thought, and uh, uh, contact. Pasa, Vedana, Sanya, Chetana, Manasi, attention, Manasikar. Let me repeat in the order I mentioned. Pasa, Vedana, Sanya, Chetana, Manasikar. Pasa is contact, Vedana, feeling, Sanya, perception, uh, then uh, Chetana, thought, uh, and then uh, Manasikar, attention. When these five qualities these are the traits, uh, qualities, signs, and indications through which there is a designation, description of the mental body. The mental body, the body here, we call uh, Rupa, but here is not referring to Rupa, but these five Together is called mental body, mental body. Not referring to the physical body, but mental body. When we mention all these five, we refer to mental body. And these five are the qualities, traits, signs and indications. Buddha said, if they all were absent, if they all were absent, would designation contact be discerned in the mental body? That means the, the, the way we know the mental body is through these five uh, qualities, traits, Signs and indication. What are they? Contact, feeling, perception, thought, and attention. These are the qualities. These are the traits. These are the uh, indications. These are the signs. If they were totally absent in the mind or mental body, then the mental body, there is no way to describe or describe mental body. And these are the things that designate to the mind. If they were all absent, there is no way to know the mental body. Okay? Let us assume that part is clear. Then when Buddha asked, uh, if they all were absent, would there be any uh, description uh, 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 what do you call designation contact uh, distant in the mental body the contact we say here is uh, two kinds this is referring to designation contact and when they were absent when thus would there be designation contact Venerable Ananda's reply is no Venerable sir then Buddha mentioned another thing. If those qualities, traits, signs, and indicators through which there is a description of material body were all absent, would impingement contact be discerned in the mental body? Now, what are the uh, signs, traits, indicators, and qualities of... Uh, Material body, form, uh, uh, what do you call, earth element, air element, water element, fire element. These are the material body. These five, four uh, together and whatever else is the uh, cling to this body and have, having these uh, qualities uh, belong to these elements. Now, there is a way to know earth element. There are signs, uh, characters, indications, 
and description of the material, the earth element. What is that? It is hard. There is no other way to know earth element. Only through this description, these qualities, do we know the uh, earth element in the material body. In the, uh, uh, then water element has uh, uh, holding character, uh, cohesiveness, and uh, flowing, running, uh, like in water, in rivers, and so forth. Uh, that is the quality of water element. And uh, then uh, heat element, or uh, what do you call uh, fire element, has uh, definitely radiation of heat that we feel. Uh, when heat is increased, we see hot. When uh, temperature dro goes down, we call, we call it cold. There is no cold element, but there is only heat element, one element. Temperate element. Only we know when we use the word temperature. And if then the last is uh, air element. In addition to having oxygen uh, in the air, uh, it is it has the characteristic of uh, motion, moving. Now, if these uh, characteristics in earth water, fire, air elements are absent, the mind will not have impingement contact. That means, this through these characteristics, the mind knows the material, materiality element, or material, materiality. Only through this, there is no any other uh, eyes cannot see our uh, earth element, air element, water element, fire element, uh, and so forth. But we feel them through their characteristics. And that feeling is a part of the mentality uh, group. In the mentality group, we have uh, contact. When this, the mind, for instance, when we sit, uh, we feel uh, our uh, f f feet touching our thighs, or when we walk, we feel the, the touch of the floor. And when we feel, we feel whether the floor is soft or hard. When we sit on a cushion, we feel whether the cushion is hard or soft. This hardness and softness belongs to earth element. And the mind has also the characteristic uh, quality called feeling, feeling. And then when the body touch with another thing like our clothes, the mind knows the, the contact. That is impingement contact. The also uh, perception, uh, when these qualities are present of the material body, mind perceives this, not with any uh, other way, but through the mind, perceive it. Then uh, uh, mind immediately become aware uh, through the attention that these qualities are present in the, the material body. And then uh, impingement contact arises in the mind through these qualities of the material body and the qualities in the mental body. So Buddha said, if they were absent, Buddha asked, uh, could there be impingement contact in the mind? And Venerable Ananda said, no, Venerable said. Then Buddha came to a third uh, step. In the third step, he asked, uh, if those qualities, traits, signs, and indicators through which there is a, a description of the mental body and material body, remember, were uh, uh, material body were all absent. 
would either designation contact or impingement contact be discerned? When the qualities of the mental body, the qualities of the material body, if they were totally absent, would there be impingement contact or designation contact if is present or discernible? Is it, can it be discernible? Venerable said no. Venerable Rana said no. And then Buddha's conclusion. Therefore, Ananda, this is the cause, source, origin, and condition for contact that is mentality and materiality. And this is why even at the at one point I mentioned when the uh, mentality, materiality arise, the sixfold base also arise depending on mentality and materiality. Now I mentioned uh, seeing, hearing, touching, uh, 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 seeing, hearing, smelling, touching, and uh, tasting and uh, thinking. Uh, all uh, appear at the same time mentally to materialize. Right? Seeing, hearing are the, are the functions of the sixfold basis, eyes, ears, nose, and so forth. And they happen, they take place immediately along or together with, simultaneously uh, with the mentality arising of mentality and materiality. So, Buddha said uh, then, now we talk about mentality and materiality, but he did not talk about uh, consciousness. Now, friends, generally uh, people think uh, when we talk about five aggregates, uh, we have uh, form, feeling, perception, thought, and consciousness. And sometimes people say, when uh, form is separated, remaining four are uh, mentality. So that is, that, is it. that is how they divide the aggregates into two groups. One aggregate is form, other four aggregates are uh, the mental group. The one aggregate is materiality, other four aggregates are mentality. That is not how the Buddha explained it in this discourse in any other other places. He mentioned, he taught consciousness stands alone. Mentality, materiality stands separately. Do you remember the simile that Venerable Sahariputta uh, mentioned to Venerable Mahakottita? Uh, Mahakottita asks uh, uh, from the very systematically from birth, uh, from from aging and death and birth, clinging and so on. He asked a series of questions, asked in the Vasariputta. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, is aging and death uh, uh, created by oneself? or somebody else, or both together, or without any cause. Sariputta said, no, aging and depends on birth. A -a -a aging and death depends on birth. And then the, when the, the same series of four questions. Is the birth uh, created by oneself, created by another, or both, or happened without any cause? When the Balasari Buddha said, no, it depends on clinging. And so forth, he went up to uh, mentality, materiality. Then when the Balasari asked, uh, uh, is mentality, materiality is created by oneself or somebody else or both or it happens without any cause? Sari Buddha said, no. Mentality, materiality arise depending on consciousness. Then, 
Mahakotidas him is a consciousness uh, created by oneself, by others, or by both, or happen without any cause. Venerable Sariputta said, no, consciousness arises depending on mentality and materiality. Now, one time he said, mentality and materiality arises depending on consciousness. Then he said, in the second, uh, second time he said, consciousness arises depending on mentality and materiality. Mentality material arises depending on consciousness. Consciousness arises depending on mentality materiality. This is what the Buddha mentioned here. It was said, with consciousness as condition, there is mentality and materiality. How is this so? Ananda should be understood in this way. If consciousness were not to descend into the mother's womb, would mentality and materiality take shape in the mother's womb? Now, mentality, materiality must be there in the womb before consciousness to dis descend and makes mentality, materiality grow, grow, growth possible. The growth of mentality, materiality could be possible only when consciousness descended into the mother's womb. That means mentality, materiality has to be there in the mother's womb before consciousness descends to it. And this point I want to mention something very important. There is a discourse in uh, Sanyutta Nikaya called Chetana Sutta, Chetana Sutta, discourse on thought. Chetana means thought. There Buddha said, if a person has thought, imagination, Nations or Anusaya, consciousness establishes there. Yocha Chintati, Pakapeti, Anusayati. These three, if these three are there, consciousness descend there. If there is no thought, but there is imagination and in underlying tendency or anusaya, then consciousness can establish there. If there is no thought or imagination, but there is only anusaya, underlying tendency, then still consciousness can be established there. If there is no thought, no imagination, no anusaya, then there is no ground for consciousness to establish. Now, this answers another question that people sometimes ask. It is a very legitimate question. That is, suppose somebody is unconscious. No thought, no imagination, but the person is unconscious. What happened to that person when he passes away? Well, according to this explanation, even though the person does not have a thought, does not have thought, does not imagine, is not conscious, con uh, he, is, he, he does not know anything. But the consciousness, 
consciousness can establish where there is underlying tendency. This person can have underlying tendency. Although the person is unconscious, I mean cannot talk, cannot make movements, he doesn't think, he doesn't have imagination, but underlying tendency is there in his mind. And this underlying tendency in, is enough for consciousness to establish. And therefore, that would be the person's, the last, the final departure from this life together with consciousness. Consciousness take root in Anusaya underlying tendency in such a rapid speed that there is no way for anybody to measure the speed that quickly the person passes away. But because of the modern technology, people can have some life support uh, connected to the computers and tubes and so forth and keep the body pumping. That is an artificial uh, uh, life. The, as soon as the, uh, the person cannot eat, cannot drink, cannot think, cannot do anything, and even if you cut person's uh, limbs, person does not know because it is dead body. <clears throat> and therefore, we have to remember uh, with consciousness as condition, there is mentality, materiality. If, if the Buddha asked, uh, if consciousness were not to uh, descend into the mother's womb, mentality, materiality doesn't grow. Then, if after descending into the mother's womb, consciousness were to depart, would mentality, materiality be generated into this present state of being? This is what is known as uh, spontaneous abortion. Consciousness enter into the mother's womb, but for some reason uh, it departs, then there will not be a, birth, a child's birth. It will be uh, the woman would deliver a piece of meat without life. Then if consciousness of young boy or girl were to be cut off, would mentality, materiality grow up to develop, uh, grow, grow up, uh, develop and reach maturity? No. And therefore, mentality, materiality needs consciousness support, consciousness needs mentality, materiality support. These are mutually supportive, mutually they, they depend on each other. In that uh, earlier simile of uh, two uh, bam sticks of bamboo sticks, two bamboo, uh, bundles of two bamboo sticks, uh, reminds all of you the relationship between mentality and materiality and contact. So now, uh, we will stop here because uh, my friend showed me the clock. <laughs> that means that I have time to stop. So friends, we started with a very wonderful, noble state of mind to share our metta with all living beings and direct or focused our metta on those who are suffering from this COVID-19 and uh, we want them to be free from this disease and recover from their disease and then 
come back to normal, regular life and live long in good health. And there are, we know, many people who are grieving the death of their loved ones here in this country and elsewhere in the world. And we want to wish them be free from grief, understanding Dhamma, practicing metta, return to their normal life and live long in very good health. There are many people who are out of compassion, trying to discover some vaccines or pills, and they are, their motive is just the relieving human suffering. Their intention is uh, very wonderful, and we want them to be healthy, peaceful and happy, and uh, have strength and wish them to come up with uh, with some vaccine and or pills reduce or remove this virus and there are people who are professional in medical field in and they are doctors nurses and so forth they are also sacrificing their lives to uh, help these uh, patients and uh, may they all be safe, may they all have uh, very good health and, and uh, continue their compassionate work to help these people. And then, as I mention every day, there are many very good benevolent leaders who have uh, great responsibility to take care of their citizens and therefore may they have wisdom, patience, understanding and courage to make right decision to help the world. In these uh, thoughts, we want to wish everybody everywhere peace, happiness, liberation from and return to their regular life, live long in good health, and finally all of them attain everlasting peace, Nibbana. Thank you for participating in this uh, morning session, and uh, I hope you continue. Uh, uh, this is Sud Sudinna. <laughs> Uh, we can continue this. Okay.